difference, the individual. And thanks to Damien, we have a radical concept of trying to actually get people to pay for the things they ordered. So like getting the iced teas and the cappuccinos on the check. So that's a real, that's a key to success. <laughs> that's, is that a struggle? Yeah. Yeah, that's a key to success is making sure that, you, that they pay for what they ordered. <laughs> Steve, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll pop in here. Um, and that is, I can't even tell you what our average check is because we have people that will stay for um, two or three hours if they're coming in for a sporting event. Uh, if they're coming in for lunch, it's going to be significantly different. What we try to do is break it down by, you know, maybe sales per hour, and it might even be by the product per hour. So how, if you want to increase your sales by $300 at lunch, which I know that is a lunch or a, a dinner, at, at, uh, uh, but if you want to increase that, you, to help your servers really understand that that translates to uh, 60 additional hamburgers. And if you're going to do 60 additional hamburgers at lunch and you have three hours to do that, it's 20, it's 20 an hour. And you have to get that specific to help them understand because you can't just say, we need to increase sales by $300. Talk about the very, very specifics. And I think they can attach, they can see that then. They can say, okay, I think I can, you know, I'm, I'm stepping up for five hamburgers here. Okay. Yeah. I agree. It's, look, it's all in the details, and I totally agree with you, Sally. Um, you know, one example of one of our clients, you know, a uh, steakhouse, they um, were able to see a, um, you know, they noticed one server in particular, going back to details, sold 90% less wine by the bottle. And the manager, you know, approached the server, and it was a hotshot server. You know what we're talking about, you know, the hotshot server. No. Thinks they know everything no. and whatnot. Really? And, well, it turned out, after speaking with um, this particular person, it turned out that this hotshot server was uh, uncomfortable opening up a bottle of wine. And, uh, you know, and so what they did, they did, you know, hey, this is the wine service, this is how we train, this is, you know, a refresher on the wine list. Well, you know, by the very next shift, the wine sales, uh, you know, by the bottle quadrupled the very next shift. And so I think it is all about the details. And if you can pinpoint the strengths and weaknesses of the particular server, and the manager then is able to address it, provide the training, and then drive revenue, and you're going to get a better guest experience. Okay. I'll take another question from the uh, internet if we can, our next one up on the screen. To stay afloat, I've been looking to trim costs whenever possible. Any advice or tricks of the trade? I don't say tricks, but any advice for negotiating with my suppliers or tricks of the trade? How would you negotiate with suppliers to try to trim costs? Is that possible, anybody? Well, we use a lot of European products and uh, imported products that I'm sure Danielle does as well. And, uh, you know, the, the exchange rate between the euro and the dollar has uh, changed radically probably in the last year, probably 25% difference. So for products that come overseas, imported products, to, um, to let your, your purveyors know that you know that that's happening, and while they've increased prices throughout the last five years as the dollar's fallen in value versus the euro, that when it does change, that you compress the time between the, the time that they're buying products and the, the time they're reflecting that price change to you. So say you're buying, you know, Burjano Parmigiano, and you know that they paid for it at $1.30 or $1.26 euro as opposed to $1.60, but they're still charging you $7.50 a pound. Well, you can go to them and say, well, look, I know that this product is costing you 25% less as of today, so don't wait six months to reflect that change. I want a decrease on that product now. As of like, you know, I always say, you know, 30, month, 30 days back, that doesn't always work. But, you know, as of today, I want the reflection of the savings and the exchange rate. So imported products for us as Italian restaurants primarily has been a, a very big way to, to create uh, incremental margin in, in acquisitions of, of those products. No, plus I think we leave a lot of freedom for our chef to maneuver in terms of and make them responsible for the food cost and all that. But uh, I see, I mean, in New York, it became necessary to have a, a, a buyer, uh, not a food buyer, but sort of a food controller. And uh, then we sit down with the chef and say, okay, we are all buying mustard and we are all buying uh, vinegars and olive oils from five different suppliers. If we narrow down to the one everybody like, let's sit down with them and let's negotiate now and we'll focus on buying only from them and, and get a better rate. And that's how we do it. Without discounting the product, trying to stay focused with the buying. What about with 800 restaurants? We've noticed um, 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 that, well, we've started a, a locally sourced initiative uh, a couple of years ago. And so uh, in the summer, uh, during the season, when 
when our core sort of veggie items, onions and lettuce and fresh herbs and things like this and bell peppers and jalapeno peppers are in season and local, uh, there's a transportation cost savings there. Uh, so that's a, that's a really big thing for us. And, and plus the added benefit of the heightened awareness of uh, the importance of, of locally sourced uh, produce. Yeah, so that's been really good for us. I'll, I'll, I'll pop okay. in, and I think it's important to realize that your suppliers are in the same position that we are. That um, the the more you ask for concessions from them, the less likely they are to be able to make a profit and perhaps stay in business. So I think it's important to identify maybe the top your top seven to ten to twelve suppliers that are critical, and talk about the long term with them. Talk about your plans and how your profitability is important. And uh, or, or just, sustain, just sustaining is important, um, and give them a reason to want to do business with you. I don't think you can. I don't. I, I think you're going to spend way too much time if you want to do that with every single supplier. But if you can identify your top seven to seven to ten, uh, I think the other thing on a local level, there are for us there are a number of other costs in the restaurant um, besides besides the food, and. On a local level, our general managers can do trade-outs with other, uh, with many of the suppliers that um, that we're working in. So they may they may offer a product that we need. We'll be able to provide. Can you give me an example? Uh, I'll give I'll give you an example. Um, let's say we have uh, um, well maybe it's, maybe it's linens and they need to, they want to pass on a, a price increase on linens. We might be able to say okay. Uh, what do we have that, that you need? And it might be they want to have us cater a lunch uh, once a month, for, month, once a month for, a, for a, a staff meeting. And so our general managers have that opportunity to negotiate their prices and then be able to provide the lunch at a discounted value to the vendor. The, um, the one point I just wanted to add is I think sometimes, just from speaking to our customers, that they can fixate solely on price as opposed to and, and may miss a bigger opportunity to work together with suppliers to provide more value for the restaurant. And the goal, especially in this economy, is obviously to drive cash flow. And I know, you know, look, whether you're a meat supplier, uniform uh, company, um, you know, or a performance management company like in Averro's case, uh, I think you have to look at things differently and say, well, what can I do to help drive cash flow for the restaurant? And I know just in Averro's case, you know, we used to just have a software, you know, business intelligence software, and about a you know, year or two ago, we actually developed a service organization that actually uncovers opportunities for the restaurants, and it's more important that we can uncover opportunities to show, hey, how we can, you know, deliver uh, cash flow to the restaurant as opposed to giving a 5 or 10% discount. So I think it's important to focus on cash flow and working together as a supplier as opposed to just fixating only on price. Just. This is a strategy that's worked for us. If you, and this is not for every supplier, but if you have a, the kind of supplier that is sophisticated enough, is to bring them in on a PL meeting and bring your, your meat purveyor in and show them your complete PL, show them your food cost by dish, price out the proteins, price out the cost of meat as a cost of goods sold in the restaurant, and throw it in their court and say, look, you eat in this restaurant, you like what we do, you're a part, you're a part of our success. Why don't you come up with three ideas of, of dishes or cuts or, pro, or things that we can create? value, we can create value for our guests, we can create margin, and we can bring new ideas to the table. Because often, they know their business better than you know their business, and they can have really insightful ideas on things that can help you. So turn it around, put it in the purveyor's court, have them come up with suggestions. Has that, can you, has that worked at a specific restaurant? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Plus, plus, I think also, uh, fidelity with your suppliers, I think it's very important. Longevity and fidelity, and there's such a trust among, and I believe, for example, I was saying about my chef where 70% we try to really work as a group, and then we leave 30% as they have the door is open, bring any other suppliers you want if you want, test other product, I mean, keep being creative with it, and, and, and keep the industry also re in relation with us. But uh, I think it's uh, uh, first and foremost, I mean, the relationship with our suppliers is key, and we're not there to squeeze or crush their heads. Right. You want to be loyal and have a good no. relationship with them. That, yeah, that, that brings up a, a really unique point that I think that we deal with a lot, is this whole balance between how much autonomy do you give a restaurant versus how much do you have group buying and, and how much do you make them part